Excellent strength and perfect clarity is the 5x5. Five five. It's time for... It's family weekly for all you geeks, nerds, and blurs. Let's get our geek on. Welcome back, guys. This is David from the 5x5, Five Five, and it is Fanboy Weekly. I haven't, I guess this is like Fanboy Bi Weekly because um, I don't think I did one last week, and um, so, and I'm still kind of working out the uh, Spreaker um, uh, voice and everything because it's just not, it's not sounding good to me. So I like to pre record it and upload it as a podcast. So I wanted to get this done and, um, out of the way because I have some things coming up that I may not be able to um, record it and um, and get it um, get it to you guys and some of the stuff may be a little antiquated it's not that old but it's um it's some uh, stuff that you guys probably have heard but we're gonna go over it today anyway and uh, yeah <laughs> my friend um, from the off off limits from the off limits show I come from the off limits show is um, laughing at me let's get our geek on. <laughs> There's one thing I'm not going to be getting my geek on. Yeah, and it is chompy. It's, it, it, I can hear myself, but it's just, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's the bandwidth. I'm not sure. So I'm sorry, guys. I might redo this, pre-record, and upload it as a, as a podcast later. But we're going to get through this one way or another. Um, but like I said, I'm not going to get my geek on uh this weekend, because it's starting tomorrow, not even tomorrow, tomorrow's, tomorrow's Thursday, on Friday, it's Dragon Con in Atlanta, so all of my friends in Atlanta, and all the, the geeks, cosplayers, um, fanboys that are heading to Atlanta this Labor Day weekend for Dragon Con, have an awesome time, the lineup is crazy good, um, but it's going to be so hot in Atlanta this weekend, so I feel sorry for you guys to, take a, <laughs> to drink a lot of water, and um, don't pass out during the parade, um, I think the parade is on Sunday, when they have all the uh, the stormtroopers um, uh, marching down, I think they march down either Piedmont or Peachtree, I'm not sure, but uh, so you guys have fun. So if anybody, um, there's a few people that I want to contact uh, for interviews about Dragon Dragon Con. So hopefully we'll get those uh, people on the show, and uh, we'll be able to talk to them and they'll be able to tell us about um, their experience. I have a few friends that actually uh, are cosplayers, so uh, we're going to be talking to them in the next coming week hopefully but today is heroes hype and more and the more part is just going to be whatever there's some things i want to talk about apple tv um the new agents of shield show when our new shows are returning um but we're going to start with the big not really breaking news um the news in um in dc um where the, the Ben Affleck is going to be the new Batman. He's going to be the new Batman for the new for the Batman um, Superman crossover coming in 2017. You know, because Christian Bale, you know, he Christian Bale bailed out because I guess he doesn't want to do it anymore. In my opinion, I never liked Christian Bale as Batman. Um, it, that you know, in, in the DC universe, there was two kind of um, Batman storylines. It was the Batman, which was the Batman books. Then there was the Dark Knight. So this, um, the Christian Bale Batman, was part of the Dark Knight. Got to me, line, which was kind of like I said, it's kind of dark, kind of gritty, kind of grungy, and and um, it was just I, I I liked I liked it, but it wasn't like I seen the last one. I just I just rewatched it a few weeks ago, and. Um, I just it was just too dark. I loved Catwoman in that, but I just didn't I didn't like it. Um my favorite um uh, incarnation of Batman on television movies probably has I would have to say would be Michael Keaton. Um when he I think it was Tim Burton he played uh, Batman um 
in uh, the first Batman movie that came out, God, I was in high school, it was probably 1988, and then he reprised his role. And I thought, for some of I thought he did more than two, but he only did two. But, you know, the first one had the Joker, which was Jack Nicholson, and then the second one was Batman Returns with Michael Keaton, which had Michelle Pfeiffer as Catwoman and Danny DeVito as the Penguin. Those are probably on the big screen. Those are probably my favorite uh, movie, although Adam West who all fanboys love Adam West. You know, he's the voice of the mayor on um, Family Guy, and all fanboys love love Adam West's portrayal of Batman in the 60s. It was total, him and Burt Ward, Burt Ward is uh, Robin, it was total corniness. But when I was a kid coming up, I thought that was the new stuff. You know, I thought it was new, I thought it was great, I enjoyed it, but... um you know, he's he has his place in history as being um, Batman. And not too long ago, I think the guy who played was Cesar Romero, who played um, the Joker on that series, pa- series passed away. Um, so, but, you know, Adam West to me, but before Adam West, there were two guys that played Batman, Louis G. Wilson and Robert Lowry, and those were both movies. I remember, and I've told this story before on a fanboy um, Friday show. <laughs> I told this before, where my mother had took me. Uh, there, there's a uh, thing we have here in the city. It's like a like a art festival, and this has to be had to be in the late 70s, early 80s, and they were doing old movies. And she took my sister and I. And uh, we were watching, um, we were watching um, old movies of Batman and Robin. I thought people, I thought it was boring, but my mother didn't like it too much. But yes, um, so I, I think I've seen one of those two guys who played um, Batman in one of those old black and white um, pre Adam West movies. And yes, he is very hilarious on Family Guy. Um, but you know, it's so funny because he's Adam West is something like um, uh, William Shatner. <laughs> you know that whole overacting and everything. He has made a career out of being over the top um, and corny with his acting. So I think that's kind of cool. Um, but anyhow, enough for the Batman. So Ben Affleck, you know, he's going to be the new Batman. So I love Ben Flack, Ben Affleck in Daredevil. A lot of people didn't like it. I happened to enjoy it. You know, I thought he he played it good. He played the part. Um, you know, they I think Daredevil didn't get as much love as it should have gotten, but um, I enjoyed it. That's all I can say. And uh, <laughs> and um, so hopefully he will be able to. Um, I think they probably want, they don't want the stigma of the kind of darker Batman, which was Christian Bale, even though Christian Bale didn't want to do it. Um, ben Affleck's going to lighten the role a little bit. I don't think, I don't see him being all dark and broody, uh, brooding Batman. But, you know, we'll have to wait for two years. Oh, God. Four years to see it? Is it 2015 or 2017? Somebody had to tweet me at the 5 by 5 to let me know um, what's going on. Um, I, I do have to say, um, my heart goes out to the families of uh, Lee Thompson Young. He was a young man that played the famous Jet Jackson on uh, the Disney television ser- series. Um, he was 29 in mid-August. And I know you guys probably know if you don't. Uh, he was found dead with a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head. I like this young actor, uh, African-American actor. Um, he also when he was reintroduced to me um, I used to watch the famous Jet Jackson with my niece uh, when she was growing up so I knew who this person was and then um, on yeah so it is I think it is 2017 yeah when they're doing the crossover I think I could be wrong but I think it's 2017 That's, they, they announced that at San Diego Comic Con um, I'm talking to somebody in the chat room um, yeah the chat rooms are open if you guys want to pop in there and give me some information I would appreciate it um, but Lee Thompson Young, he was reintroduced to me um, through um, Smallville. He was played the cyborg. He, he played cyborg, um, and we all who know who cyborg is. He's a cybernetic half um, computer, half machine. I guess three parts: computer, machine, and man. Um, 
that we've seen on the Teen Titans and both shows. I don't think he was on Young Justice, though. Um, he has made it. He was in Justice League Doom. And there was another. I know he's and he's in um, the Flashpoint Paradox, which I still haven't seen. I'm going to get it. I promise. I haven't seen it, and I'll give you guys a review. But yeah, he was found dead, and he was currently on the television show Rizzoli now. So, like I said, my heart and my um, condolences goes to the family um, of Lee Thompson Young. But we're going to take a really quick break where I can get some of my notes together and. Um, it's Fanboy Weekly. We'll be right back. Excellent strength and perfect clarity is the 5x5. Hey guys, I'm back. Um, 
And where we leave off of, we were talking about Ben Affleck as Batman, the death of Cyborg. Oh, a couple of new shows that are on right now. But I guess they're really not really new. Well, it is new. Um, they're going to return. There's uh, Face Off is on now. If you guys have watched Face Off in the past, it is a show about um, people who make uh, like the crazy monster and paint and costume work for... Um, um, For like movies, I uh, know one of the judges is is the uh, creative and um, monster maker on Buffy the, well, was on Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Um, so watch the show. I watched the first season. I think this season they're doing like uh, some of the, the 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 best from previous seasons. I think this is only the season four. Um, and another show that I just checked out on um, Apple TV the other day um, was Heroes of Cosplay. Um, and that brings not even brings to where we touch back on Dragon Con and San Diego Comic Con. Um, I've never been a person that wanted to dress up like a superhero. You know, I would like to wear my shirt or you know maybe a hat with my favorite person on it. I've always wanted a um, a thing a shirt with a phoenix emblem emblem on the front of it. Um, but I never found one to come in my size. I don't want like I'm on fire. But. <laughs> but um, uh, you know, I've never wanted to dress up. You know, I've never been into that. Sometimes I think I'm too cool, but you know, I think it's cooler to dress up. And I never thought I would never think of what I'd want to do. You know, I don't want to be the, the the fat the fat Black Panther. You know, <laughs> I don't think that it's cute. But um, but I, I you know if I do that, I would I would pay homage to my um my one of some of my favorite superheroes. I guess I never I never really tell you guys told you guys what my favorite uh. Um, costume heroes were, um, of course, my favorite all time is Jean Grey slash the Phoenix. Um, I think the story is is a story about rebirth and coming, you know, uh, achieving your full potential. You know, Marvel Marvel with the X Men line and mutant line, they have mimicked real life in ways that is it, it, it kind of synonymous with the struggles of black people in America, gay people in America, any of the oppressed minorities that the majority doesn't think that um, fits in how they've been rep repressed, um, how they can kind of uh, come up and do the right thing and fight the struggle. And with that being said, uh, today is the 50th anniversary of the March on Washington. I watched that on TV earlier today. Um, we're still we still have a long way to go. It's kind of hard to believe that in 2013 that. Um, we would still have some of the race problems um, in America uh, that we did 50 years ago um, when we we made our really first push uh, with the the Dr. Uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Um, during the March on Washington. But anyhow, um, <laughs> Off Limits show says uh, she's evil now, isn't she? Unless I haven't seen the rest of the story. She hasn't been evil for a long time. She's well, she's been evil several times. You know, the very first incarnation, uh, Jean Grey goes to space with the X-Men. The Phoenix entity takes her over, throws her up under Hudson Bay in a cocoon. And the entity is the one that went crazy and tried to kill everybody. But the part of her that was Jean Grey saved, um, commits suicide and saves the teammate on the blue area of the moon. Um, then when she's resurrected, Scott has found, has, um, Scott married a clone of Jean Grey because he thought Jean Grey was dead, which she wasn't. Um, and that was Madeline Pryor because she was called Madeline Pryor. She was a prior, made by Mr. Sinister. She was a prior, she lived a prior existence as Jean Grey. Isn't that kind of crazy? Marvel's so intelligent. That's kind of crazy. And uh, she ended up being, getting part of the Phoenix Force insider. And uh, she went crazy as the Goblin Queen. But she, again, she dies. Uh, Jean Grey is back to being Jean Grey. And she went 
for Jean Grey for a very long time in the comic books before she established that she wanted to be the Phoenix. That's when Rachel Summers, the future Phoenix, the daughter of Jean Grey in an alternate timeline, uh, wanted her to take the name and do do it good. And so she became the Phoenix again. But then that's when she really started to receive her full um, psychic potential, tele, tele, telepathic potential, telekinesis potential. Um, she's the telepath of the highest order with that she can uh, rearrange uh, matter on a subatomic level. And that's when she became the Phoenix as Jean Grey as well. And yeah, I know, I know. This that's why she's my favorite character because it's so complex and but it's right then then they um then she dies again. Uh Magneto uh kills her. Um but then the Phoenix Force comes back trying to and reanimates her. And um if you read the story you know with the Stepford Cuckoos, um when they they kept it in their heart the, the phoenix entity but she she goes back into space to um retrieve all the broken pieces that the phoenix has split into um in the what what they call the white hot room and they never really explained what that was but they use it a lot i'm sure gina gray is going to make one last appearance she's in a version of the marvel universe now as gene gray not the phoenix uh but you know hope summers that's in the current that was the whole Avengers versus X Men um, crossover stuff. Um, that was the big thing that the Phoenix, you know, took over Scott, um, Magic, uh, the Submariner, um, Colossus, and somebody else. I can't remember who the other person was. And uh, that was the whole big crossover between Avengers versus X Men. So you know, right now their their ties aren't too close. You know, but it never really has been. You know, although Wolverine, Beast, and um, Storm, they're all Avengers as well. But um, yeah, I know too much about that. I told you I was a big geek. Nobody, nobody really knows that. I keep that. I used to keep it suppressed. I'm a little bit more open. I came out of the geek closet, so to speak. Um, <laughs> but um, so check out Heroes of Cosplay. Um, it's on the Sci-Fi Channel, and they had a documentary, and it uses some of the same people. And this one girl who's absolutely, she's like a badass chick of cosplay world. Her name is Yaya. She's in it, and they go on this journey with all these they, they, these um, people making these outfits to win these prizes at these comic cons, these cosplay conventions. Um, I'm sure they'll have con um, some cosplay contest at Dragon Con, which my heart is really hurting because I'm not going to be there, but my mother's having surgery tomorrow, so I'm not going to be able to go. I wouldn't leave town with something like that going on. Um, what else do we have um, going out, going on today? Fanboy Throwback. Oh, yes. Fanboy Throwback. My throwback for this week would be the movie Superman 3 with Christopher Reeves um, it had Christopher Reeves and um, and what was it? Richard Pryor. And Richard Pryor was a criminal tur. Uh, well, I guess he was a poor person turned criminal and learned how to do computer language in like a day. And so then, remember he made the the um, kryptonite. And he used the ingredients off a cigarette uh, package. And it made him, it had the effects of him like red kryptonite has on Superman in the comic books. And he, Superman turned bad, but then at the end he ended up being good. He had to fight a supercomputer. It was, it was talking about cheesy. Out of the three, it was probably the cheesiest. I, I enjoyed it. I remember going to the show to see it. Uh, but then there was Superman 4, Quest for Peace, was absolutely horrible with Meryl Hemingway. But um, Superman 3 is uh, my fanboy throwback of um, the week. So what else do we have going on? Not a little, not a lot going on on the Marvel uh, AR app. I did finish, um, well, finish rereading the uh, Infinity, uh, the first Infinity comic. Uh, remember we got, um, we got the Infinity comic back on free comic book day, the pre, the preview, and now the the free one came out. The, not the free one. The series started last month. 
Um, actually, it was a pretty good story. I had to reread it because it's, it's got some deep stuff that I hadn't know that was going on in that universe. Um, thing is, um, the next uh, be, the invasion is next in this Infinity series, and then the tie-in is going to be Avengers 18, New Avengers 9, um, Avengers Assemble. 18, Cap- Captain Marvel 15, which I guess that's now um, Warbird um, what's her name? Ms. Marvel, she's um, Captain Marvel now, and Thunderbolts number 14 uh, I have some stuff to go through I have really, really poor notes today so you guys have to, have to bear with me because um, oh, and this time next year, we will be looking forward to Guardians of the Galaxy by Marvel. You know, Marvel is throwing out these movies every year now, and they're big, big movies. Uh, we have to look forward to is uh, Thor, which I think comes out in November, which I'm really, really ready to see. Um, and then Captain America. And then Guardians of the Galaxy this time next year. Um, and Jaiman Hinsu, who plays Drax the Pursuer? Pursuer? Uh, no, Drax the Destroyer. Um, I guess that character wasn't an uh, African American character at first, but they made it African American, um, just like they did with Nick Fury and Samuel Jackson. Although in the uh, Unlimited series, Nick Fury is a black guy. But um, uh, John Mahinsu was talking about it's important that he played this role because there's, there's not a real um, diversity when you see superheroes on the big screen, which I thought was really important because um, we have Holly Berry as Storm, she was Catwoman, but who else is there? You know, there's not any other um, blacks on um, that, that are superheroes, so hopefully we will um, get to see more in the coming year. I'm waiting for a Black Panther show. Um, but, um, so that, that, that was cool of him to see, um, a few more things before we wrap up here today, um, uh, Arrow is coming back on October the 9th with Stephen Amell, and he's the best vine, viner ever, um, thanks Icon for showing up today, I appreciate that, um, and also Age of the Shield, um, is going to be coming to us on September the 24th, and they promise that they're going to explain how Agent Coulson came back from the dead. I'm thinking that, and I'll explore this more on the blog, on the on my blog at recyclingblogtalk.blogspot.com. Um, they're going to explain how he comes back. So I'm just going to say he was never dead because we've never seen him dead in the Avengers movie. So hopefully. They will explain it, um, and it will satisfy all the fanboys um, who think he shouldn't have died in the first place. Or if he's dead, is he going to be a robot? Is he going to be a ghost? Is he going to be a double? Is he going to be a brother? So I'm thinking he was never dead to start with, um, and I think that's how the route to go. They're going to keep it real simple and not, and not go much into it. You know, it's a comic, it's a comic book world. You know, they've, they've brought back a ton of people a thousand times, so who really cares? Um, <laughs> with that being said, a few things about Apple. Apple TV is one of my geekiest uh, th- tech, tech things that I have other than my computer and my um, PlayStation and stuff like that. Um, they just released some new stuff on Apple TV. It looks like they're going the Roku route. Um, they're adding apps and they're add- they've added a lot this year recently, you know, before this week they had added HBO Go and Watch ESPN. I've been watching um, the U.S. Open on Watch, e- Watch ESPN. Uh, but they added the Weather Channel. They asked, added Smithsonian, um, the Disney Channel, and Disney XD this week. So And Disney XD had a lot of superhero-themed shows on it. Um, so kudos to um Apple and Apple TV to bringing us uh, that stuff so we can keep on watching more TV because I think that's where TV is going. It's going to be a more of an on-demand service, but you still have to go through for your provider to watch the Disney shows. And unfortunately, I have Time Warner, and it's not part of the lineup yet. Anyhow, thank you guys for listening today. This was Fanboy Friday. We will see. no, it's not as Fanboy Weekly. We will see you next time. Thanks for listening. A 
Excellent strength and perfect clarity is the 5x5. Five five. It's time for... It's family weekly for all you geeks, nerds, and blurs. Let's get our geek on. 